This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Today I'm joined by a former colleague who is now Chief Creative Officer for Joyce Meyer Ministries. On top of all that, she's written her first book. My guest today is Ginger Stocky. Ginger Stocky's back with us. She is the CCO, Chief Creative Officer of Joyce Meyer Ministries, which means she's in charge of all the print media, this online stuff, the shows, traveling with Joyce to document everything that happens worldwide, and all of a sudden she decided to write a book. Wasn't that enough of a creative <laughs> outlet, Ginger? I've had so many great opportunities to go all over the world, and I love sharing the stories of the people and what's happened. And people are always saying, you know, I wish I could do those types of things, or I, I wish I could have yeah. those experiences. And for a while, I really just felt like there was something that, that was missing, like something that God wanted me to do that I needed to do. Have you ever felt that way? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I did it, sometimes I didn't. <laughs> exactly. So I put it off for a long time, and, and then I realized I needed to write this book. I needed to write this um, because God was asking me to and for other people who needed to have a life that really brought out all those things that God wanted for them. So that's why I pulled it all together. So is this, I mean, is God has wired everybody for some of these things. I mean, he's wired, has he wired everybody for big adventures? Well, let me use my husband, Tim, as an example, if I can, right? So We won't tell him. <laughs> He's so used to it. Yeah. He and I are very different, um, mm -hmm. but we we love to do some of the same things. But when we get there, we will experience them very different. So, in other words, I love to travel, and he does not love it. But when we're together, we compromise, so we make it something that he does really enjoy. And I like to do things that are maybe a little bit more extreme. Um, mm -hmm. Not always, but you know, I like, remember some of those. <laughs> You've been there for some of those. Yeah, some of those, a few. But for instance, um, not too long ago, I got to go paragliding over the cliffs, um, and it was oh, wow. amazing, and I loved it. And Tim would not have done it for anything, but he had a great time because we visited this professional golf course that was right there in the area. So adventures are different. You do what you love, and that's really the key. And what God teaches you through all those things are very specific to you. Should we look for just the big adventures or can we can we look at life and look look at ourselves on a daily basis and say, this is something God's put in my life. This is and, and look for little adventures during the day or Absolutely. throughout the week. Absolutely. And that is one of the key points of this book, because when we're talking about wonder, wonder is not the great big thing that you would have missed if you hadn't done it. Often wonder is that tiny little glimpse of something beautiful in your day-to-day -day routine. So maybe it's a giggle from a grandchild, which I'm really enjoying yeah. now. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe it's an interaction with somebody that you hadn't met before. Even in this time of pandemic, maybe it's getting to know a neighbor in a way that you hadn't before from a safe distance. Because there is so much wonder in every day that God has for us. But when our head is down, we're going to miss it. We have to look up and connect with people and go where we feel like the Holy Spirit is asking us to go. And when I say go, I don't always mean leaving the house. I mean, praying for the people he asks us to pray for or mm -hmm. connecting in another way through Skype or whatever it may be. There are so many amazing, wondrous moments in the everyday. You're exactly right. Well, do you just in, intensely go out looking for big adventure or does sometimes adventures just find you if you're if you're open to what God might be doing? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. There are many, many things that keep you from those adventures if you allow them to. And I think that's really a key. Um, some of them are very natural for us. Some of the things that keep us from adventure are our fear, inconvenience, um, we don't want to get messy sometimes. You know, we don't want to mess up our routine. We don't want to risk getting to know someone because we might be rejected. So those kinds of fears can really keep us from a life, whether you call it adventure or not, but from a life of wonder, definitely. So I love talking about keeping our focus where it needs to be 
not on finding a great big adventure that we can just tell someone else about for the sake of doing it, but for finding the, the glimpses of beautiful things in our everyday lives, relationships with people, quiet moments with God, beautiful walks outside, whatever it may be. Don't, don't let your life go by and miss those things. When people look at social media today and they look at all these, these creators on YouTube and all the things that they're doing, how does, that, how does that affect how we think about ourselves when we're thinking about big adventures that I could go on? That is such an important point because that can completely derail your personal adventures. If you think it has to be like this person that I see over here on social media or what I'm doing is not significant because I'm not doing this crazy thing, that's not what chasing the wonder of God in your life is all about. You have to be able to put your focus on God and not on any other person, not on social media, not on your mama's story. You know, it needs to be your story. And so when we can not compare ourselves to what other people are doing, when we can see our own personal adventure as something beautiful between you and God and not exactly like mine or Bob's or, you know, anybody else's, then it changes your outlook on life. It really does. It takes that adventure mentality that I was talking about and makes it applicable. It makes it something you can do because otherwise it's impossible. Those stuff, it's, it's not always even real, right? Don't base your life on that. But if you can make it your adventure, uh, an agreement, a relationship between you and God, then it becomes attainable and it becomes something really beautiful. But this, somebody might say, well, yeah, it's easy for you. It comes naturally. You're enthusiastic and you love life this way. And you've always had these big adventures and you've been doing this for <clears throat> 30 sometimes some years. Uh, <laughs> is there a danger? You think there's a danger in the reader saying, yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting book to read, but it's all about somebody who can do these things and I'm just, I'm stuck at home. Well, the whole key walking through this entire thing is about not comparing ourselves in a way yeah. that God doesn't want because God created that person that you're talking about with things in mind that will bring them great wonder. Um, I talk a little bit about the Cinderella glass slipper, right? How it always looks better or in somebody else's life. But God has a slipper that is perfectly made for your foot as well. So when everybody tried on that glass slipper and it didn't fit, they were all disappointed. And yet, if you actually wore glass slippers, it probably wouldn't be all that great. Your feet would get all sweaty, you get blisters because of the chafing, and I'd probably trip it, oh, right ugly. anyway. It would all be bad. But so my glass slipper is probably more like a, hike, a hiking boot, right? And I'm so happy in that hiking boot. So someone else's glass slipper will be something perfectly made for them. It is so much more about those small steps that you can take every day. And every chapter in this book, even though I use these examples from my life, every chapter in the book will inspire you to find the examples in your own life. So it may be something as small as write down something that you learned in the scripture today. What is something that God spoke to your heart about? Because that is a great adventure. What is something that you can do for someone else today? What is a need that you see that you can fill? Because that is a wonderful thing to do. So there are perfect examples for everyone who will read this book so that they can find the wonder in their own life and not want someone else's or compare it to anybody else's. That's great. When you look, and I want to say when you look back, it sounds like you're ready to retire, but when you, you got a lot, of, a lot ahead of you. But when you do look back on, on, on a lot of the examples you put in your book, do you find the, the biggest adventures, the most wonder in, in places, things, or people? What, what do you find that in? It is absolutely in people. Absolutely. And I do immensely enjoy seeing new things and going new places. And, and for me, that's been great. Other people don't need that in their life and, and they find other wonders. But people, I think for almost all of us, is where we will find the greatest wonders. 
all of the friends that I still love in Ohio and all of the new friends that, that we have here, they're such a big part of our lives. And then, you know, unexpected encounters with people, uh, whether it's someone that I've met in another country because I've had opportunities to meet amazing people. And one of the things about that is often you feel like you don't have anything in common because your lives are so different. There is so much in every person that is innately who God puts in there that we can connect to one another. So that that has been one of my greatest adventures. But it is also in the relationships that we build on a a one-on-one basis that we find not only great connections, but we find ways that they feed into our lives and we feed into theirs. So connecting with people um, on a deeper level. And when I think about that, I think about vulnerability. You asked about pride. And if we can't be vulnerable with our own lives and show people who we really are, it's very difficult to make those kind of connections that will bring that wonder into your life. So, I, you know, I'm able to talk about that a little bit too. How can we be real with other people? How can we be vulnerable and make connections, make relationships that stand the test of time and bring great love and joy into our lives? Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. It's all about people. All about people. What, yeah. what would you say to that person whose, whose world really is very small? Maybe it's constrained by things that they can't control. You can think of all kinds of things, but somebody whose world is very small and they can't get outside that world, maybe except for videos or, or, or books or movies or something. What would you say to them about finding wonder in their life? Yeah. I, if, I, if I can use an example of someone that I know, um, many, many people listening will have known and loved. And I know that you did too, Bob. Um, Bertha Huber <laughs> was one of those people who I saw such wonder in and I gleaned so much joy from. And the beauty in her life was astounding. And she wasn't out gallivanting all over the world. No, she wasn't. She was in her home. She was in TV 44, but she was praying for people continually. And what she offered people with her wisdom and just sharing her life was so beautiful there. And then even I remember as she got older and I had moved away, you know, we would still talk on the phone and she eventually wasn't able to go out and do anything Mm -hmm. else, you know? So she was talking about being there and how she prayed for me. And she always told me how special I was. And I know she told everybody that because everyone (laughs) was so special to her, but What she was able to do at that point in her life where she could not do anything else was wondrous. So I don't think it ever stops. I think God always has something for us right where we are, even if we can't get outside of the doors of our own home. Right. Bertha, I mean, she said that she was she never retired. She was refired. Exactly. And she started the whole prayer ministry here at this TV station when she was almost 70. And that's when she started the prayer ministry. And it was a whole new, she just opened up a whole new world for a lot of people. Don't it was, give, it, it was don't, amazing. Yeah. And you, you talk about fear a little bit because fear can be very real. Give me an example of, I mean, not just the fear of being embarrassed or the fear of pride, but I mean, real physical fear can stop us sometimes from seeing what God has on the other side of that fear. You have any examples of that in the book? Sure. Yeah. There was a time that we were at a refugee camp um, outside of Paris. We were in France at a, at a refugee camp that was um, to explain what refugee camps are like. You've all seen them on TV. So you've got that visual, but these are people who have been through the most difficult circumstances that you can imagine. They they've had to flee their home, their jobs, their families, everything that they know they've lost it all because of threat to their life. So these refugee camps are, are difficult places to say the least. So we meet all kinds of different, different um, people when we're there helping in the refugee camps and trying to help them get their lives started over. But where there is desperation, there's also danger, right? Because people don't often know how to deal with that. So refugee camps, not always, but can be dangerous places. So we were at one camp in particular, this, this one in France, and um, we were 
handing out some supplies and and helping a lot of the people. And then a, a group of men who had all come on their own um, because they they weren't able to bring their families. So there was a, a large group of men from um, a country that was war torn and there was just a terrible situation there. And they wanted to talk to us and they were angry because we hadn't gotten to them yet. We were helping in this other area. And very quickly um, they said, talk to us or we're going to make you leave here and not help anybody else. And so, you know, we said, of course, you know, let's talk. And we began talking with them and interviewing them. So I was interviewing the leader of this group. And as we were doing that, he got more and more agitated and more and more angry as, as he was sharing their needs and their story and how he felt like no one cared and no one would tell their real story. And so he was drawing a large crowd and it was getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, here I was, this, this one small woman in the midst of this crowd of angry men. Um, I had I had my cameraman behind me, but I couldn't see anybody else. I couldn't see any of our crew because the crowd just overtook all of us. And I got scared. I'm, I was afraid because they were threatening physical violence. They were getting very agitated and loud. And my first thought was, I just need to fight my way out of here. I just I'm going to have to just either start swinging or get down really low and crawl through legs. I don't know what, but I was afraid and I could just feel my heart pounding and I, I wanted to run and I started praying. And sometimes when you're so afraid, it seems like, of course you're, but sometimes you're so afraid. You just want to get out of there before you even think about that. But I, I, I started praying and it was just, God, help me to know what to do here. We need you desperately help me. And I, first of all, stopped talking. I just listened to him for a long time. And because my tendency is to argue back, right? <laughs> if I don't agree with something, I'm going to ask more provocative questions, right? And improve my point a little bit. And it was, no, be quiet. And, and then I asked the question, tell us what you want other people to know. And when I asked that question, the entire situation began to de-escalate because he thought about it. He became more peaceful and he began sharing from his heart instead of from his anger. And the entire situation changed. People were nodding their heads. They were grateful because we were listening to them. And my fear subsided um, and we finished the interview and we walked away. And at that time, I knew that God had just done something amazing. God had stepped in. He had spared us from a very dangerous situation. But I also learned through that we need to listen to people because they want to be heard more than mm -hmm. anything else. So it's not always best to run. It's best to pray. And then when God says run, run. <laughs> but if he doesn't, if he tells you something else, do that something else. We learn from our fear. Fear is not a fun thing to, to go through, to experience, but we do learn from it. And I really saw God move in an amazing way. And after I walked away and breathed for a little bit and was able you know, to like, wow, we, we, we survived that one. Then I, I was able to see God's movement through it instead of just the fear of the situation. That is, that's that's an amazing story. I mean, I know you've you've seen a lot of those things, uh, and they are big adventures. Is there is there a a, a thing about uh, just getting so involved in the mundane, the everyday, that our time management? Do we have to look more at time management, how we're managing our days, in, in order to look at some of these things? I I think that's definitely true. I think sometimes there is a lot on our schedule, and we have to learn to say no, right? If our schedule is so full of what we have allowed to be on it, um, we at least need to ask ourselves the questions, where are my options? We, we want to make everybody happy. We, we don't want to tell anybody no. We don't want to disappoint our kids. We, we want to do everything that we possibly can. But to have a life that is joyful for you and for the other people around you to not miss the wonder that God has for your entire family or all of the people that you work with. You need to look at a schedule and say, this is, 
my priority, and this is something I'm going to have to say no to, even if it's a good thing, I can't do it all. My kids can't do it all. (laughs) You know, Um, I have to be able to really put my efforts, my creativity, whatever it is into the right things and clean out that schedule. I know it's hard, but even if you can find a glimpse of a time that you can begin to free some things up to, to think differently, to spend time with God, those have to be priorities and it will change things a lot because that treadmill can run you right over if you allow it to. And I've been there. I have been plowed over by the treadmill many times. And so I've had to learn a lot through that. Yeah. Slow the treadmill down. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Slow it down yeah. and uh, wear better shoes and take <laughs> things off to get them out of the way that are stumbling blocks. <laughs> you know, like you, you, he plays on the treadmill. He yeah. has to move. <laughs> you, you would, that's a good place to hang my clothes. Anyway, <laughs> you, you had mentioned listening to people and how important that was. Also, uh, you, I mean, a lot of your adventures come out of serving. I mean, uh, I mean, the Joyce Meyer Ministries, I mean, you, you people serve all over the world. And so a lot of your adventures have come out of serving other people and giving in that case. And, and how much of that should we be looking for when we, I mean, rather than just saying, I'm going to write a check or I'm going to take this over to a, a, a ministry and give that to them. What should we be looking for as, we, as we're sowing into ministries or we're giving to other people, trying to understand them? Yeah. You opened the door for it when you said that people are our greatest adventures. And so seeing what people need and, and serving that need, and there are so many ways to do that, but it opens not only their life to gratitude and joy, but it opens your life to gratitude and joy as well, because there is no other way to say it other than I have gained so much more from all of the people that I've ever been able to reach out to and help than they ever did. It, it's just made my life so full of gratitude for what God has given us, for what he's allowed us to be part of, all of it. And, and gratitude is another great place to find a lot of wonder in your life. Um, open the door to gratitude and you do that by helping people. When I have a need, if if I can serve someone else's need in a in a real and tangible way, then I begin to see my needs being met. I feel my heart swelling up, grow three sizes that day, right? Um, that's the way it works. And there is so much to be said in letting the love in your life, the joy in your life overflow into others. If you hoard it, if you keep it, then it will eventually just settle down and you're not even going to experience it anymore. But if you keep it overflowing and pouring out into all of the other people's lives around you, then it will change you and them. So that's what that's what serving people is all about. And it it sometimes it comes down to, again, where I just I don't have time for that or I don't know how to do it or um, I'm not sure who to serve in my area. It, it doesn't have to be a big step all at once. And this is not about guilt. This is about praying and asking God and he'll show you a glimpse and you start with that glimpse and you go to the next place from there. One of these big adventures, you, you, I mean, part of it is you're looking for God. I mean, you, you see God in these things. But at the same time, God is revealing himself through you to somebody else. Absolutely. All the time. And not only to somebody else, often it's a stranger. More often it's your children or your spouse or the people that you work with. Those people that need encouragement and joy and love around you all the time. And I think most people want to be that. We don't want to be that person that brings the room down when you walk into it and kind of sucks all the joy out of it. We want to be that person that they see God before they see us. That's really my desire is that when I have the opportunity to do whatever that God goes before and that he's what's left after I go away. And there, there are so many tangible ways to get better at that. And so that's part of what I write about in the book is just to help us all get better at loving people in a different way and and in a better way, serving them in a way that makes a big difference and, and yet doesn't make you feel like, you're no longer yourself, right? 
it's so easy to get so wrapped up in serving somebody else that you lose your own life or your children suffer for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about balance in our lives and having that mentality that God has wonder for us around the next corner all the time. But I'm not going to forsake everything else that is important to go do this. I'm, I'm going to keep this idea of an adventure mentality and walking with the Lord in a way that he keeps it all in balance. Because it's so easy to get messed up out there trying to just chase the wrong things. And, and you've spoken to this a little bit when you mentioned Bertha Huber, but there are people out there thinking, well, Bertha was a very, very special person. She was you know, full of the Holy Spirit, and, she, and God was directing her, and she was very close to God. But speak to that person that's, that's looking back over their life now, and they're looking at things in the rearview mirror and seeing adventures that they may have missed, and all they're now is now is regret, and they think, it's too late for me. Speak to that person. You know, it is never too late and that's really easy to say and a lot harder to walk out but it is absolutely never too late you look at examples of people in the bible through throughout the bible and god doesn't ever stop working with and on anyone um you know abraham was waiting for this promise for so many years and it came much later <laughs> for life for him and sarah it's never too late the Bible also promises that when you seek God, you will find him. He doesn't say, do your best. I may or may not be there in the end. Yeah. He says, seek me and you will find me. So that's why I love to talk about chasing wonder because we will catch it. There is no question. When we look back, we all, we all see things we wish we would have done differently and, and some We'll have more than others, but God's not looking back. He's looking forward with us. So we can start where we are right now and begin taking these small steps of walking closer and closer to God. And the life that you really want to enjoy with God will begin to develop because it, it's not about where you've been. It's not about who you were. It's about who God wants to bring you to who God wants you to become. So yeah, nobody ever has to look at it and think this isn't for me. Everything in God's word says it is for you too. Yeah. It's great to sit down and speak with you and to have you on the show, but the next book, let us know about that. But this one is Chasing Wonder, Small Steps Towards a Life of Adventure. And we are looking forward to getting that. Check it out any, any place you want to look online and, and pre-order that book. I would, I would love to hear it. You can find out more about it on my social media. If you want, it's at Ginger L. Stocky. And um, um, same for the website. You can find out more information about it there. If you'd like to find out how you can order Ginger's book, go to this website. If you'd like more information about Viewpoint, then go to WTLW.com. Thanks again for joining me today. Remember, you can watch the interviews you've seen today on demand on YouTube. Plus, you can also listen to all of our episodes on The Viewpoint with Bob Placey podcast on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere you listen to a podcast.